were meant to do, about to perform your first dissection on a cadaver. I want you to imagine the emotions going through your brain in that moment. You may have some anxiety, stress, maybe even fear. Now, I want you to imagine that exact same situation, but this time, you've done that dissection hundreds of times. You're practiced, you're ready to go. Good morning, members of the panel, fellow peers, and members of the audience. My name is Carter Gregory, and I'd like to invite you on a learning experience you can't get anywhere else. My research question was the basis of my research. It, it is where I got all of, my, all of my ideas and everything. It spawned from how does the use of virtual or augmented reality impact learning outcomes in education or training settings. Now, before I go on to the next slide, I believe that I have a special circumstance. I have a topic that not many people know of. I believe that if I, sh I have a 40 second clip from a video that over overviews my, uh, my topic and gives you a better insight to what I'm talking about. If you'll take a look at the screen. Transfer brings the future of training to your organization with hands-on simulations that equip learners with essential skills they'll need to enter a new career. Trainees move at their own pace through the hands-on simulations where they gain valuable experience and can make mistakes in a safe environment. Yeah. During the instruction, our digital coach gives learners real-time feedback to help them develop skills and confidence. That's right. That was a good attempt. Learners demonstrate their mastery of basic skills through hands-on practice. Nice. Building a comprehensive foundation of the knowledge they'll need on the job. So in that video, you saw mechanics, cooks, pilots, um, electricians all receiving training before they ever even have a chance to make a mistake in the real world. Those mistakes can be costly, they cost money, they cost confidence. It is not an ideal situation for these students doing the first time on any, anything. Um, so my, my solution was virtual reality or extended reality in business training. Business training is extremely it's extremely outdated and old. So what I've done is I've taken my STEM pathway and I've decided that I'm going to take emerging technologies and put it into a, a field that I have interest in because I'd, I'd love to become a owner of a business one day. And um, I really think that we need to make advancements on our business training. So, why do we need to focus on trade school advancements? My focus was trade school. I, I also looked up um, uh, college institutions from Motlow to uh, Tennessee Tech to Western Kentucky, um, but my focus was trade school because of all the, because of how much hands-on experience you can have in a trade school. Um, so I threw up some statistics. There's 63% of Americans don't have a bachelor's degree, according to College Transitions, which is, it was a staggering number. It, that number really jumped out to me because from a family where multiple, multiple people, pretty much everybody in my family has gone to college and completed college, that is something that I just, I didn't know existed. I thought that that number would be way lower. Uh, 3.4 million manufacturing jobs have been posted in the last year according to Transfer VR, and 4 million healthcare jobs have been posted in the last year. Now I know what you're thinking, Carter, why are you talking about healthcare and trade school? Well, I think the number of healthcare workers that didn't get a bachelor's degree is actually way bigger than you might think. These, these healthcare workers can go into a trade school and use virtual reality to test out sewing stitches or anything like that. Nurses, easily can go to a trade school and be able to perform their job just as well, if not better, because they have hands-on experience that you don't really get coming from a college. Now, why do we need to advance our training? Um, outdated technology, no opportunity to practice, and lack of engagement. Those are the three biggest reasons that I focused on. Um, in my, in my uh, research, I really focused on the outdated technology because as, as a STEM a member of our STEM pathway, I, um, I really love learning about new technology and how we can use that to better our community. Outdated technology really is, it hinders the ability of kids to learn because especially with kids that are, you know, they've grown up with phones and technology and video games, they're just not, 
they're not into their learning whenever you're using these outdated technology pieces that are just really not, they're not conducive to a learning environment for students that are, you know, coming from a Gen Z or a, really any of the newer generations. Another thing with lack of practice, um, these kids are maybe, another reason is because of the cost, lack of practice, but these kids are just not able to get a, a good learning environment where they can try over and over and over and have no fear of a mistake. These kids are getting put into situations where they'll have to take apart an engine, for example, as a mechanic in a trade school, and you have to worry about breaking a camshaft or breaking any gear on there. Any tiny gear could be costly. It could cost thousands of dollars to replace an engine. With virtual reality, all you have to do is click reset. It's one of my favorite things about this emerging technology. It's, it's really, it's something that students can take home with them and be able to put in the effort to make themselves successful. Last thing was a lack of engagement. Um, these kids, like I said, they're, they've been, they've grown up with their phones, they've grown up with technology, video games, they're just not, they're not engaged in learning when you're not using those things that they've grown up with. Um, I know a lot of kids will be rolling their eyes if a, if a teacher pulls out a piece of paper for them to write their essay on. I know most of our essays now are digital, or um, most a lot of teachers don't even don't even accept paperwork anymore. We're just in a digital age, and these kids, you give them something to put their hands on before they ever even get a chance to learn. It's not going to work for them. Another thing with safety, uh, this wasn't one of my main points, but obviously uh, it's a huge thing when you don't have to worry about getting your finger stuck in a gear or having to worry about maybe the mental health of nursing students and students that just really aren't prepared to work with cadavers. I mean, that's a dead body. That's a lot for students to take on. And taking away that entire, that entire aspect of having to touch a person before they ever even know what to do is just, it's, it's super, it's a huge piece in our education. My project had three phases. The first phase was presenting to the youth and presenting to the children about the importance of extended reality and learning. I would say that this was the most, um, I'm going to use the word leisurely, it, um, it was more of a fun, uh, it was a fun way for me to connect with these students and be able to talk to them. Uh, the next phase was a high school student thing. That was one of the most fun for me because I was able to see my buddies get on virtual reality and talk to them and teachers about the importance of it. Um, the third phase was a meeting with the president of TCAT. And actually, if you see that picture up there, that is one of the only uh, driving simulations. It's in a TCAT Knoxville. Um, about changing his curriculum. So in my, in my first phase, I found that the youth I, I presented to were extremely excited to learn about the virtual reality rig. You'll see right there, I am presenting and showing a, um, one of my younger friends uh, how to put on his uh, virtual reality headset at our Science National Honor Society's annual science day. That was a huge help for me to be able to present to these kids at that science day. Phase two, I had multiple days of presenting and demonstrating to my peers about you know, the importance of having business training and how easy it was for them. Some of them even thought it was just a game. I, uh, I, they were just so excited to get on. I wasn't even having to ask them. That was one of my favorite parts. Uh, phase three was my third and largest, was a meeting with TCAT, the president of TCAT Murphy's Girl of Smyrna, in order to show him the importance of having extended reality in his curriculum. He, what I found was that tech, technology is not being used at a, at a large enough rate for people to be able to, you know, fully get their thing. And this is my favorite slide, phase four. So I know I told you that there were only three phases, but phase four is because I'm not done. Everything that I've learned through Capstone, I'm going to continue to keep doing. This is not one thing that I'm just, I'm putting off to the side and I'm done. It is something that I'm truly excited about. Now, through my reflection, that brings me my growth. Through the research, I've never had to do something like this. JSTOR, MTSU Library, the speaking. Obviously, I'm up here. I'm super confident. It's helping my confidence. Networking. I found people like the president of PCAT to help me do all this stuff. Uh, my professional mentor was kind of a struggle, so I, I had trouble contacting him. But then I ended up being able to contact other people for my project and just being able to talk to people. That was a huge thing. Uh, thank you. I'd like to give I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of you, and then everybody who came to watch me, and also Chloe Carreras for putting on National Science Day. That was a huge help for both both of my first two phases. Thank you.
Do you have any questions? Uh, so a lot of the kids had great ideas, but the cost effectiveness isn't there. And, and without the cost effectiveness, it won't be implemented. I mean, as, as much as I hate to say it. What would, and this may have been in your research, and it may not, so it's, it's fair if, you, if, it, if this doesn't touch on your research. How would, like if I'm TCAT and you bring this in, what would be the cost effectiveness of this from a business standpoint? So you talked about all those advantages, but where am I going to save some money? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Did this turn off? There we go. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but that was absolutely one of the biggest things I researched was how much money can we save? And like I said, you're not having to you're not having to replace parts that are thousands and thousands of dollars on engines and camshafts and all of these things that just they add up money. All you have to do is click reset instead of having it not only saves money, but it saves setup costs, it saves having to get somebody bring somebody in to professionally deep clean and all of these things completely get wiped away because all you have to do is click reset. And that's one of my favorite things about it. And this may be what Coach just asked here, but uh, like, for example, nursing, you said they could teach them how to do stitches. Like, how much would it cost to create that training video? Is that something? So I don't know the exact number, but I do know that this rig right here, I know that there's that you can get a in this tiny little box. It's uh, currently going for about two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, the newest one's going for about four hundred. But this tiny little box has an entire universe in it, where all you have to do is find a nursing simulator, and that's easy with transfer VR um, transition. There's multiple. There's multiple ways to. There's multiple companies that are creating these um, these simulations, but I, I would say that it's more about the, um, the cost of the subscription to the company than it is about that. Um, I know that I've seen some, some subscriptions have been maybe $15, $20 a month, which it adds up, obviously, but you know, for the cost of education, that's, that's nothing. And then um, for your project, uh, you had Science Day, which had elementary kids, you had the high school kids, and then you uh, presented to the um, uh, TCAT director. Yes. Uh, and I've asked everybody here this, this same question. You mentioned that you're going to continue it. Yes. When and how are you So continue? I've actually been invited. To, I love, I'm actually really excited you, you asked that question because I wasn't able to touch it because of timing. Um, but I've actually been invited back to TCAT to um, present to their board of directors and investors on how we can better implement virtual reality simulations in their welding systems and their mechanic systems. Um, I know that they're already doing it a little bit in CDL training and uh, medical. I actually got a tour of TCAT and he showed me um, one of their, they have a system where it's like a board and instead of a cadaver, it's a virtual simulation. Now, it's not exactly the same as this. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more high tech, but it's, um, it's really important for these kids to get hands-on simulations in their nursing and medical and mechanics and uh, pilots. Pilots are one of the huge ones that they're using right now. For pilot's license at MTSU, they have so many simulations that you have to use because they're not going to put a kid in the plane before they know how to fly. So that's one of the huge advancements that you can see that it's already working in, in um, aviation. I would think that that decreases the cost of getting your pilot's license by a ton. Oh, it absolutely does. Uh, we have, uh, in the VCA, we have full um, we have free uh, usage. free usage of their uh, of their aviation lab, so we can go in there and actually um, fly planes on our own if we wanted to with our with our uh, with our little kind of like we did in the makerspace. Yes, uh, yeah. they have one. They actually do have one in the makerspace. Um, so that's one of the things that I wanted to do, and I probably and I'm thinking about doing in the future was maybe working with the makerspace people to get more than just that aviation training. Well, if you had more time, I would say the other place that it could be used is in the CTE programs. I mean, you look not just our school, but there's a lot of health care, there's a lot of um, car mechanics, 
you could then move Megatronics into all schools instead of just... Oh, like absolutely. And that was something that I talked about with um, Rain. Rain's topic was actually getting um, trade school to get implemented into Blackman High School. And I love that idea because it gives kids a chance to get a head start because I just, I don't think that we're getting enough, I don't think the, I don't think enough kids know about the, the idea of, um, of trade school and the benefits that it has. And I think that if we if we brought that to Blackman High School and we brought all of those simulations with it, I think that that would be a huge step stone to getting kids at 100% where they want to be. Because we now there's welders and mechanics that are making more money than some of the nurses and people that have these college degrees. And I just don't think kids know enough about that. What specifically do you want to pursue next year, wherever you are? Have you figured that out yet? So I have it narrowed down. I'm likely staying in state at MTSU, UTC, and, uh, Tennessee Tech, or um, Tennessee, if I was just going for academics. Um, I've been lucky enough to uh, have, a, have a chance to go play athletics at the next level. Um, but I haven't decided um, anything on that. But if I'm just strictly talking academics, uh, it's down to those four schools. And I'd, I'd love to do engineering uh, because, like I said, I love technology. Um, I've, I've thought about doing civil engineering. Um, there was a point where I, I really wanted to do mechanical engineering or petroleum engineering. Now, we don't have that in the state. I'd have to go to the city state for that. But um, right now, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, specifically structural engineering. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.